Hey, thanks for joining us in Big Bear Country. If you're a young math student studying algebra for the first time, or maybe you're an older student just looking to get a little rust off, um, you're in the right place. We're going to introduce you to linear functions tonight uh, within the bigger picture of we're studying chapter two, functions and graphs. But today, I guess the first question is, what exactly is a linear equation? Okay. And, and, and um, let's see here. There we go. There we got our cooking. Um, we, we've got a lot of bullet points to kind of get you warmed up with. And sometimes these bullet points make more sense after the fact, you know, after we've done some live examples and you can kind of come back and read through these and, and they start to, you know, come to life a little bit more. But in our previous chapter, we learned how to solve equations that had only one variable. Okay. Emphasis on only one variable. And that solution was just a single number. We'd maybe get x equals 2 or x equals negative 5, something like that, just a single number. Today, we're going to solve equations that have two variables, okay? Two variables. And um, we're going to eventually see that the solutions are, instead of just a single number, your solutions today are going to be ordered pairs in the form of x comma y. All right, so they're going to be paired together. Like if x was equal to 2, that's going to be paired together with a specific y value. Um, any ordered pair that satisfies the equation is considered a solution. In other words, when you, when you plug those numbers in, it makes a true statement. Now, this next bullet is a very technical one, and um, it's, it's not a make or break for today, but it could benefit you down the road. See, the largest exponent you're going to see on any of the variables today is going to be a 1, and usually that 1's invisible. So, like, when I write, um, let's see, where can I squeeze this in? Um, if I wrote y equals 2x plus 1, see, what there is is there's an invisible exponent of 1 right here and right here. So when the exponent's a 1, we don't typically see it. It's invisible. And because the largest exponent today is a 1, we'd call these a first-degree equation. All right. Now, here's another bit of a mind twister here. See, not all ordered pairs are solutions. But but these equations do have an infinite number of, of solutions. So we're not going to be able to find every single one of them per se, but we're going to be able to take a, an ordered pair, for example, and determine and say yes or no to whether it's a solution or not. Okay, so here we go. Determine whether the following points are solutions uh, to the equation 4x minus 2y equals 10. All right. So here is my function, and I'm wondering whether x equals 2 and y equals negative 1 is a solution or not. So what you're going to see me do is if I just rewrite the equation, 4x minus 2y equals 10, I'm going to substitute this 2 for x and the negative 1 for y. So I'll have 4 times 2 minus 2 times negative 1 equals 10. And what we've got cooking here, this makes 8. And then this actually makes positive 2 because a negative times a negative makes a positive. Simplifying the 8 plus 2 makes 10. So since 10 equals 10, we're saying yes, 2 comma negative 1 is a solution. And then let's try this other point, 0 comma negative 4. So we've got um, x equals 0, y equals negative 4. Again, I like to just rewrite the equation. I'm in no big rush here. We'll substitute the 0 for x, the negative 4 for y. 4 multiplied by 0 minus 2 multiplied by negative 4. Does that equal 10? So let's see. 4 times 0 makes 0. Negative 2 times negative 4 makes positive 8. Um, Uh-oh. 8 does not equal 10. So our final answer, no. The ordered pair 0 comma negative 4 is not a solution. So that's all there is to that. That's not bad at all. Okay. Now, let's say you did find all the solutions. So we, in that previous example, we found one solution, but there's a, you know, there's a million more out there. If we were to connect all of those solutions on a graph, they would form a straight line. Okay. Therefore, we like to call these equations linear equations because you can kind of see the root word line right in there, the first four letters of linear. Now, the standard form of a linear equation is this right here, ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, x and y are your variables. So, for instance, the a might be a 2, the b might be a 3, the c might be a, a negative 4, maybe, any, any sort of combination like that. Now, how does that impact us? So, what we want to do is we want to practice rewriting these equations in standard form. 
And what I want to first do is just rewrite that standard form. It's anything in the form of AX plus BY equals C. It, what you'll notice is we want the terms, the two terms containing the variables X and Y to be grouped together on the same side. So what happens is I want to get this 2Y on the other side of the equal sign. So all I got to do is I'm going to subtract a 2Y from both sides. Now you'll notice the 5x and, oops, I want to make sure that's a y. The 5x and the negative 2y are not like terms. So I'm just going to keep them separate. Those bears cancel and you're left with 8. So this is considered standard form. Um, if they ask you, a would be 5, b would be a negative 2, and c would be an 8 if they asked you for that. Okay, again, I want to get, I want to get this term on the other side. So I'm going to add 6x, add 6x. Now the y and the 6x are not like terms. So I'm gonna write 6x plus y. If, if you were working on this ahead of time and you wrote y plus 6x instead, you're totally okay. Now be careful, this doesn't equal two, it equals negative two. And just in case they ask, your a is six, your b would be a one, and your c would be negative two. Okay, moving right along here. Let's see if I can get this 4x on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x, subtract 4x, and that's going to be leaving me with negative 4x plus y equals 5. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this negative. Not that it's super evil, but I, I'm not real comfortable with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. Whatever I do to one side, I got to do the other. So that's going to make positive 4x minus y equals negative 5. And now it's in a more favorable form, so to speak. A equals 4, B equals negative 1, and C equals negative 5. Okay. Last but not least here, and, and there, there's more than one way to attack this and, and still end up with the right answer when, it, when it's all said and done, the dust settles. What I'm going to do is uh, da, 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 let's add this 8 over first. And what that's going to do is that's going to cancel those. So I get y equals x plus 8. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the x over to get negative x plus y equals 8. And then similarly, just like the last example, I'm going to wrap this bear up and I'm going to distribute a negative 1 throughout the entire equation to make positive x minus y equals negative 8. And that's in, considered in standard form. Your A value would be a 1, your B value would be a negative 1, and then your C value would be negative 8. Okay, let's see. What else we got cooking here tonight? Oh, here's a fun one. So we went, you remember how we said there's an infinite number of solutions to every linear equation? Well, we're going to focus on finding five of those solutions. Of course, we're not going to find all million, bazillion of them, but we'll focus on finding five of them anyway. And these x's right here, these are called your input values. So we're going to input them into the equation and um, imagine substituting a zero right there. So we're thinking, and I'll do a little scrap work here on the side, um, two multiplied by zero plus one makes one. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this one and substitute it. So two times one plus one makes three. Now I'll substitute a two as an input. 2 times 2 plus 1, that makes an output of 5. So again, this column is called my inputs. This column I like to call my outputs. And then I'll substitute a 3 for x. So we got 2 times 3 plus 1 makes 7. And again, we could verify all these calculations on our calculator, of course. Um, and last but not least, we'll substitute a 4 to make 9. Now a really fun pattern, we're going to kind of go above and beyond here for a second to wrap things up. Little ninja secret here. You see this 2 right here? We're going to find out in a later lesson that that's called your slope. And notice the pattern that you see in this column right here. They go up, they go up by 2, up by 2, up by 2, up by 2, and that all ties back into your slope right there. But again, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but it's nice to see that pattern. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks for hanging in there with me. Hope you found something very helpful today. And please share this with your friends if you think they are in a pinch and need a little help. And we'll continue to spread the good word about math.